Yeah, so session on Tony Din. Uh, my name is Vitaly. Uh, it's like Italy with a V. Uh, hello, distance people, or wherever you are. Um, we were one of the two colleges uh, who trialed um, uh, Tony Din. Uh, Christ College was the other college and I had a, a good discussion discussion with Greg before and he actually uh, made a very interesting comment. He said, we're trying to drive a Mercedes uh, like a Fiat or so. I could very relate to that because I, I'm German and I thought, well, it's like a Porsche in Australia. It just doesn't make sense. Um, anyway, so uh, we've been experiencing or working with, with Turnitin uh, since uh, semester 2015. And uh, so we had it for about a year. And uh, I thought I'll start with some statistics to show where, uh, how we've been using it. Um, so from July to December last year, we had 11 instructors on Turnitin, um, 118 students, about 350 submissions and uh, originality reports for them uh, were created. So an originality report is created pretty soon after a submission is made. So the reason why there are two missing is probably because I submitted them and then deleted them. So I didn't get around to create a similarity report, originality report. Now, great mark is a term in terminology. It means how uh, was this assignment marked within the Turnitin infrastructure as an alternative program? And uh, we had a 30, the calculation 33% relates to the 117 great mark papers uh, to the submissions. And um, so from January, this year to August, we had an increase, and um, an increase in the grade mark, that's probably the one that I want to point out significantly, that most lecturers are actually using it now to mark their assignments on Turnitin. So they're not downloading it anymore onto their computer in order to mark it on the PDF reader, they're actually marking with the Turnitin. Now, um, the, there's a discrepancy between submissions and originality reports, again, related to the fact that we have deleted a number of assignments, possibly, or, um, yeah. Okay, and the overall statistic, um, you can see that there is a, an average there uh, for the rate mark, 49%. Um, we've submitted so far over 800 papers and uh, marked almost 400 papers in turn it in. So there is a little bit of data coming through at BSD. Um, most of our um, units, or almost 90% of our units, are actually um, required that the students submit their assignments on Turnitin. So for some of the intensives, um, so the MA intensive that we offer, we sometimes use the um, native uh, Moodle submission uh, module. Uh, otherwise, we for study contracts even they all have to go through Turnitin. Um, yeah, so the deployment. I'll just share a little bit about uh, what we've been uh, doing at BSD and how we've used it. Um, so we used it on Moodle. So we installed the the plugin on Moodle instead of using the BS the Turnitin website. Um, and uh, lecturers set up their own um, module within their own courses, so I actually don't do it. Sometimes I do if they need help, but uh, they receive training, they know how to do it, and uh, they do it. And students submit their assignments themselves as well. Um, so then the um, so, and most lecturers are now marking the assignments on Turnitin instead of using the marker or the PDF reader. And yeah, and there are a number of functions that we haven't used. For example, the peer marking, we haven't used that. We haven't used the e-rater grammar check and the e-dictionary. Um, we don't use marking rubrics, although we did test it, um, but uh, we haven't gone down that path. And we don't allow students to, to see the originality report, um, which means that they can't resubmit an assignment as well. So we haven't made that avail available to students. That's probably a decision that we, I guess, um, made uh, sometime in a faculty meeting, decide, well, we'll stick with the current system and, and, and just let them uh, submit their final ass assignment. And that's it. Um, so we offered some training for faculty, some formal and 
ad hoc training in faculty meetings if sometimes at a faculty meeting something is coming up and they wanted to know how do you actually do it on Turnitin? Then we, we've got a projector in the in the uh, in the staff room where we hold the meetings and uh, quickly show how it works. Um, so they were trying to in how to set up, how to get the settings right, um, how to mark and how to return the assignments within Turnitin. So you don't have to send, with Turnitin you don't have to send assignments to students anymore. You just change the post date and students go on to Turnitin and pick it up. They need to press one button that often forget it, but they, um, yeah, they can just see it there. And then we've also provided training for students in orientation. We've got a number of um, documentation that I've created and we support them as well. So if a lecturer needs one-on-one uh, -on -one help, I'm, I'm there to help. If a student needs one-on-one -on -one help in order to submit an assignment, um, we start with PSD help as well. And uh, this is the, the material that I've created. You're more than welcome to look at it. So this is um, how to set up the um, module on Moodle. Um, and then also how to submit the instructions, uh, how, instructions on how to submit the assignment via Moodle. That's a two-pager, and then there's a simple one-pager on how to view the marked assignment on Moodle. So information is available, um, and students um, use them, although they need to be reminded where to find it. But it's on the front page of Moodle. Um, yeah, <laughs> sounds normal. <laughs> um, a few challenges that we had along the way, but they are mostly related to settings. One of the settings is allow submissions after due date. So if the due date has passed and the student is unable to submit the assignments, change the settings. <laughs> if the students can't see the, the marking on the assignment, change the post date, change the settings, and it, they, they can see it. And, um, and then sometimes users can't see the marking because they haven't clicked on that one button that they need to see. Um, yeah. What is Turnitin? Um, who, who's working, who has worked with Turnitin before? Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, maybe that's, that's a really good uh, point now to ex actually explain what Turnitin is. <laughs> good, according to Turnitin, uh, sorry, according to Wikipedia, Turnitin is an internet-based plagiarism prevention service. Uh, it's a text matching service. So what it does, it matches word patterns between different papers uh, to content that is found either on the Turnitin database, uh, on the web, or on, on, on the internet, something that can be accessed without a username and password. So the Turnitin crawlers, these are uh, within the Turnitin website, they just go through the internet and see what they can find. And if there are any text pattern or, um, or word patterns they can find, they will give you a matching. matching. But it always requires you to, to check it, whether that pattern actually um, constitutes plagiarism. So what turn it, uh, it's, got, it's got marking tools, got also peer reviews, but, um, and also it can be used as a moderation tool. But what Turnitin is not is, it's not a plagiarism detection software. It's a text matching software. It, 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 it always needs a judgment made whether that, that, that actually constitutes plagiarism or not. So um, you can't just say, oh, this, this paper was submitted in the similarity report. There's a, um, a traffic light system. So if you have, I think, below 30%, you, you, you get a green light, and then over 30, you get maybe a orange light and then a red light. Um, a high percentage doesn't mean there is plagiarism, and a low percentage doesn't mean there is no plagiarism. Um, so it always requires judgment. So this is probably one of the reasons why we haven't re released the uh, originality report to the students yet, because we haven't trained them to interpret those results and, and, and to use it actually as a um, writing development tool. I mean, it would be great if we could release it to them and they can actually work with it to find out how to improve their writing skills, but uh, we haven't done it yet. So we'll, we'll do a quick tour and I'll show you a few features. Um, the three features I'll be um, looking at is the text matching. Um, and, uh, and then I'll, I'll show you how Turnitin does the text matching. Uh, we'll look at the marking features as well and then how it could be used as a moderation tool. Now the, uh, yeah, here we go, text matching, I'll, 
I'll point out a few things. The reason why I've got them in the PowerPoint is that you can go back and see what items we've covered in that area. Um, so, but for now, I'll, I'll leave this PowerPoint and I'll go to our Moodle to show you how it works. So this is a um, this is our Moodle. Um, I've just pulled up a, a unit TH four hundred one six hundred one, and um, the assignment submission is is embedded in here. Um, so this is the Turnitin logo, and this is how it's identified. That's that's why the students submit their assignments. And we had we had um, here, so we are multi-streaming. So we've got the four hundred and six hundred level. Uh, in that unit, um, yeah, let me just go up to the top. I'll just go to the summary, turn it in assignments, and um, I'll, I'll just pick up the first one the thousand word essay. So, this is uh, the page where um, you can see the settings. I won't go through the settings. In, in detail, but I just point out a few things. So uh, the title for the submission, the start date, due date, and the post date. Now, some terminology here. Post date means release date of your marking to the students or of the grading. Um, so if a student looks at their assignment before post date, they won't see the comments by the one by the um, by the marker. So uh, they, if if if. If your post date is set in the future and you tell your students, go and check Moodle, uh, uh, go check your marking, and they won't see it. So you need to make sure that the post date is either the day before you tell them or on the same day. Um, you can export the assignments, you can have uh, other things. So uh, let's just pick up the first, first submission by the students. Now this student has followed our um, Uh, naming convention for assignments. We here you can see the uh, the name of the assignment. So we require them to put their ACT number down, the unit code, and then the type which assessment item it is. So a B C D. Um, yeah. So this is the Turnitin screen, and um, up the top you can see in which unit you are currently. So that's uh, H four or six or one. And you can in here you can see which assessment item you um, you can navigate through the assessment items. And then you can also navigate here on the right um, to the different um, assessment pieces within that assessment item. And left and right here will just get you to the next paper on the previous one. Um, you can see the assignment submission here. That's exactly how the student submitted it. Now we've them to put a grading sheet in and yeah and then up the top the the originality button will actually show you where matching occurs and it will list them according to occurrence as well so um, it will highlight them now given that the cover sheet is submitted by all students <laughs> you will notice that there is a high percentage for that paper now, that's, that's plagiarism, really. right there. Um, yeah, so if you have, and, 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 and I'll make the comment straight away here in, in regards to the, to the index, the similarity index. If you have a book review which is only three pages long, and the first page is a cover sheet, 33% of, of your paper is plagiarized. No, you can't make those kind of conclusions. So, so um, yeah, but um, so you can you can um, so you go through the text and we'll give you some text question. I haven't actually looked at this assignment whether it's got some plagiarism. I don't think it has. Otherwise, it would have come up in a meeting. But it, it shows you some matching here, and then you can click on one paper to oh, hang on this one. So this is this is uh, the, the merge overview, and these are all the sources, and you can then see all the papers that were submitted where there is a large matching. Um, there was a paper submitted to Southern Western Seminary, so that, that's a, again, 
text matching in this paper was submitted to Southern Western Baptist Theological Seminary again, because it is a paper submitted to another theological institution or to another institution, you can't just access that paper, they need to release it to you. If, if you record it, they can decide to release it to you if they, if they feel like it, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and you can also go and exclude sources. So in here you say, well, this, this piece of paper, so the, the, the paper submitted to the ACT will exclude them. So exclude source, exclude all of them, actually. And notice the 34% similarity index here. It drops down straight away. Now, you, uh, and down the bottom here, the excluded sources, you can then re include them again if you feel like, oh, we, that paper probably needs to stay in because I'm, there might be some, some similarity here. So you can restore them all. Um, now, there is also a filter uh, available. This is, these settings are done. There are some settings uh, that you need to do before you set up the assessment, the assignment submission page. And you can, you can say whether you want to exclude quote, quotes, bibliography, exclude matches that are less than five words or so. Um, but you can change them later on and say, well, I actually want to um, include them all and say zero words and then apply changes. And then you'll notice that the similarity is jumping up again. So it, it, again, the similarity index is useless if you don't know what it is, how it is, how it's, uh, as uh, constituted. Um, so down the bottom um, is a submission info. So you will notice all the details about that paper, when it was submitted, and, and when it was break marked, and, and, and so on, originality report. Um, now, it's a web-based service. It's a paperless thing, and it's an online service, which means that usually you need to mark it while you're online or have access to internet. Now, but uh, Turnitin has released an option if you have an, a, uh, an Apple Pad, uh, what do you call them again? An iPad, that's right. So you can actually mark them on an iPad and then it will download to your iPad and you can mark it while you're offline. Um, but not, it, it doesn't work with a Windows machine or uh, another one. So now let's just look at, yeah. And then you can submit, uh, you can download the submission as well. So that's available. Cool. Um, now that's, oh, I, I think I forgot one thing. Um, there's the, the text-based, uh, text-only report. So that's, that's a tool that's available as well. I'm not sure how much it was used by our lecturers, but that's another tool that um, it's just all text-based instead of online. And, and um, so if we can click on a, on a review, oh, that document is no longer available. Um, Yeah. So there was one paper that was similar, and we'll just show you where it pops up, and we'll give you the details about the, the document, and it shows you also the um, yeah the details there. All right, um, so let's let's go back to the document view. So this is the text matching area. Um, do we have any questions about text matching? The key question of the whole thing is um, how much stuff is online. That is, it's only checking against stuff that the that A is online and that B the magic knows how to find. Yeah. Uh, do you have any sense at all of how comprehensive that is compared well, to the books that your students are actually using? I have a statistic from 2011, and there were 14 billion of pages of index web content, and then 165 million student papers plus 200,000 new papers daily. So, um, and they have access to 110 million articles from periodic, periodicals, journals, and other content databases. So that's a 2011 statistic. Um, say you want to know, as a student, copy something from this book. Can you see what that, can you tell if that book is uh, something that the software will interact with? So I'm asking a question. Yeah, um, John, do you have more aware of it? And if it is interacting with the book, it's not going to be so. My answer is that the majority of the book that I've written in that area, I'm not going to get into the book. Right, okay. 
Which is a remarkably thing that one of the other stuff is not existing. And we could have come to the conclusion that five years in this time is five four hours chances that it's going to be able to make it. It's going to be a part of the same thing. That's the kind of thing that will give you some indication of what's going on. But you still, in fact, in many cases, you go, I'm not sure what the other side of it is. If you're a student who are here, often the main problem is the payment for the project. They still put their still put their foot in the middle, but source, and then you've got to go and look at the market because you can find it and you say you don't put your combination in place. So they're actually helping us to find sources in the last case. But there is still quite a lot of stuff there that would be left in the market. You would have noticed the reference to the Southwestern University is also the same. Well, I think that's actually showing you that slavery is in the same place. Because those people who use hard copy sources, our students who use the same source, they, they, their student has put it, has put it in their paper. Yep. They have slave laws, yep. and they have their slave laws in as well from the same source. So it's, it's actually showing the sources to you. You can't get a look at the university, but you know that you're certain that that's come from the source. So it's a good indication that dodgy stuff is happening. But there are, there are ways to sort of get a sense of what's going on. Um, but it's, it's part of the jewels, part of the very, very good people. So it's part of sort of interactive um, facility technology that suggests text that is included. Um, you, yeah. can, you can email the support team and say, hey, you need to include. Maybe this content as well. Um, yeah. But uh, it's a thing that you know, it's just a bit of a jump. And it, it is going in gradually, but it's bigger than it's not. So it's just a lot less risk for it. Just in Queen's material, to be able to say, log on to the team. Because it seems that's what a lot of digital books are now in that case. Not quite sure, actually. Um, yeah. Not aware of that. I think it's easy to just put in the application that it's access to the source. My sense of this is that I found it in uh, focus. Is not a university based tool that I use for some operations and those sorts of things. The business model. Doesn't make enough money for for doing this. So you, you ask them to say, "What do you do X, Y, and Z?" And that includes this thing. Just, just not of enough value. For it. But my, my sense is that, actually, that um, if BST keeps doing this over a number of years, you accumulate your own increasing force. But in the end, you may well be able to find this student in 2018 lifted student 2015's essay pretty much entirely and put their own name on it. So that, that is where we may get some traction from. That's right, provided we use the standard depository. Um, yeah. So you can opt to say, I don't want to submit it to the eternity in depository, I want to just keep it in house. Um, but yeah, it, it, I guess. Pointed out earlier already, so uh, the the source might not be the the source might not be available, but a student, another student might have quoted it before, and you know, okay, there's something something going on. I need to investigate that further. So it certainly it will help you to to see whether there is there is plagiarism happening potentially, and it will highlight it. I mean, for us, it highlighted that we actually need the register for because a lot of first semester first students weren't quite aware of what needs to happen and how to write properly, how to cite properly and and um, Bennett in was highlighted a few few things. So we actually established a corporate memory. And we have an academic register where we highlight okay the student has received a warning saying okay hey, uh, and, and the student was shown how to do it properly. Um, and so next time they do it in a different unit with a different lecturer, uh, they can be picked up and it can be reported then if, if they do it. Um, yeah. Anything that's available online. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
as to whether they only get the little bits that you get free of charge or whether they're paid Google to see lots of the book. You know, that's part of the issue. Because we can all access Google Books like in a campaign. Yeah, I don't know how complex. Yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we have Chinese students, we have a Chinese program, and, and they pick up similarities. Again, it is it, it can be patchy because it might not just reflect everything that's available, and some books are not available in a digital form, but um, it does it does look whatever it's available on text patching, so regardless of which language you, you write, um, it helps. It helps, so it, it certainly reduces, there are some statistics that try to then put down and say 90% of people reporting that, that it reduces their time to find um, academic misconduct. So, the more ICT colleges use this, um, and over time, does what is submitted become part of the database? Correct. Right. Then it would start to show up because, you know, we're teaching similar units and that and using similar resources. So over time, uh, that sort of plagiarism, that line which does begin to show up. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So we're seeing it from the city already. And we'll see more yeah, it will become more useful. <laughs> <laughs> the lingo is important. <laughs> and that would be, from my perspective, part of what this is about is it's a mind shift that we get more information from. Well, this is going to be identified either as a misconduct. Mm. So this is a, a, a potential job to improve student life and capacity to. Uh, you know, follow <coughs> conventions. That's right. And it's having those effects for us. We've we been a spike in plagiarism detection for a whole lot of students that are at the council that have a whole lot of work. But I think it's just revealed what's been going on over time. Any comments on that? I mean, in that aspect of it, um, have there been uh, for a particular kind of, kinds of issues that, that tend to crop up for particular types of groups of students? So, for example, undergraduate versus postgraduate, English first language versus English second language, that sort of thing. Had a lower score because Turnitin's never seen English like. <laughs> so, so we often find that, you know, the you know, students who get really low score, but then Turnitin can't work out <laughs> what, language, what language you've seen. So we know it's all a bit we're, we're quite convinced it's original. The, um, the, the, the purpose of Turnitin, from a Turnitin perspective, is to, to help students improve their writing skills, as well as, I guess, from lecturers to pick up um, some text matching there. But uh, the way they kind of envisage how Turnitin is used within an institution is actually to make it available to students as well. So that, that the re reference before to a Mercedes or a Porsche in Australia is, is to use feature so I'll just show you a slide that was created by um, Turnitin and they they suggest you, the student creates the assignment or the lecturer creates assignments students discuss topics in the discussion board and then the student writes a draft and submits it and then it gets a report the originality check and then he can the student can address those um, citation problems and and then it's also given made open uh, made available for student uh, for peer review because the student actually realized okay I'm actually writing it to an audience it's not just trying to figure out what the expectations of the lecturer are in order to uh, receive a certain mark but they're actually writing it's a process they, they know it will take time and they actually need to please audience and uh, student peer review will help to actually write better and then they're able to resubmit draft, they get it again, see whether that has actually worked, whether the paraphrasing and so on has, has paid off. And then and then the instructor or the lecturer gives gives a 
um, great mark, ideally by using rubrics showing, okay, where do you actually fit in a certain category, in, in, in a category or level, and then as the rubrics are properly described, saying, okay, and if you're engaging with the primary source, a high distinction will look like proper paragraph, and then, but if you only scored a C, then you know, okay, how do I actually go up in that area? So this is, this is probably the, the whole package that you can probably apply to it. Now, we're not using it to its full extent. We're only using it as a final submission. We, text, we do some text matching, and then we give a review uh, to the students, and they, and they pick it up and, and hopefully le learn for the next time, which um, some of them do. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and according to... Now, so they've done some statistics on, on how it works, apparently, within an institution. So they've, they've, they've done some checking over seven years, and they looked at, at, um, at the high percentages. And um, so according to, to them, is, uh, they, they actually saw a decline in, in the number of papers that have a high, had a high matching um, review report. And so the different spikes here, um, show you the uh, the beginning of the semester, and um, yeah. So and then that's at the beginning of the semester. It might be a new batch of students, and they realize, okay, this is what's kind of expected. Only personal feedback, so we haven't actually done it in, as an institutional kind of thing to say, okay, what, do, what does our student body think? We haven't done it. Um, okay, so let's, let's go back to, um, to the tour um, and focus on the, um, the marking, marking part. Um, there are certain tools that Turnitin offers you, and others, they're not, and other tools are just not available, like a, a tick or an arrow. Uh, if you're used to using them, then uh, you won't find them, uh, unfortunately. Um, let's just go to, to the assignment and, and see what, what this lecturer has done. Um, now, the different layers here, you can actually turn them on by clicking in this left corner in here, and it still highlights it to you where there is some text matching. And then we can turn on grade mark, and so you'll see how this lecturer has commented. Now, when, when students are picking up this assignment, they need to make sure that they're clicking on grade mark, otherwise they won't see the comments. So you see how some tricky questions. Um, so as you can see here, there are text comments available, and there are also bubble comments available. Now those bubble comments, you can just drop one in here. Um, you can you can just straight away write into here, and then save. And what happens is they actually disappear in a box. So when students engage with that feedback, it's best to engage with it electronically first, because if they print it out as a PDF, that comment is hidden. If I turn it in adds a summary page at the bottom, and we'll say, okay, comment one, bubble comment one was X, Y, Z. So it's best to engage with it electronically first. Um, now, there are also quick marks available. So if Turnitin has pr produced a number of of them and created some of them and you can use them and just drag and drop them in whatever this one awkward the expression or construction is cumbersome or difficult to read consider rewriting so you can just drop it in here and um, or you can create your own tool so if you click on and here you can actually create your own set of tools and you can re and you can just drag and drop them in so it's it is helpful um, so it doesn't. It makes save. It may save some time if you know you have like a set of thirty comments that you constantly re recycle. Uh, put them in as a quick mark and then just drag and drop them in. Um, your the, you can see the title is very short here, but you can actually make the title longer 
and it, and it will appear. So awkward expression, consider rewriting, might be a better title here because it actually appears fully in there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they will see that in, in straight away, but then if they hover over the uh, over the bubble, it will appear and say, okay, this is what it means. But that full comment will appear in the uh, in the review down the bottom, so if you download it. Um, Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a very good comment. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you want to send them down a certain path, you you are able to do that. Now, what you can do, you can highlight text and give it a different color. For example, yellow, and then you can write in here as well. Save it, and it will appear. Now, what the other option that you have is you can highlight text. You can press the delete button. Oh, what's happening? Oh, okay, here we go. It it deletes it for you. I mean, just strikes it through with red. Um, yeah, and then uh, so the thing that this lecture I used mostly is this text tool. This text tool is actually um, it enables you to make comments up to 2,500 characters. So there, there can be some, some significant common, uh, a lot of comments here. So you can see this the lecturer has used it over here. Um, but there is also a, a general comment section, which we could just uh, put it all in there and then it will appear in the summary. So you can just put it here and you have actually 5,000 characters in this area and you can even record something if you want to um, yeah, hear your voice. Uh, here's an overview of comments that were made. Um, all the comments neatly summarized and there's also the rubric section and you can apply a rubric for that page. So um, if we were to go down the path to say we don't need to have the resource sheet anymore, we just want to use turn it in as is, and we can uh, get rid of the result sheet and use the rubrics. Uh, again, we haven't really tested it uh, with lecturers. Uh, yeah. 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 No, this is this is one of the problems we have with Turnitin. Um, it's actually available for Turnitin UK users, but after going back and forth with the support team, they told us that it's. It was supposed to be released in 2014, but it had some delays. Um, yeah, so we, the reason why we've adapted the, the naming is because we wanted to have it anonymously marked. Um, What's the only place that the name appears though? If on the top of your computer marker, for you. <laughs> That's what John's doing. <laughs> So, and it is on turn it in, um, I guess, agenda to, to implement it or release it for international users rather than just turn it in the UK. Well, I think it's an American service. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, down the bottom here is an option to download the current view for printing. Now, which it, it will generate a PDF. And I'll just show you quickly what it looks like. And you'll see that's where the clumsiness in, comes in somewhat because the some text the text is uh, the text is cut off possibly at, at times and um, and the bubble comments are not visible. Um, so okay. 
It's actually on my other screen at the moment, so it's just up here. So it adds a cover sheet to the students. So um, now, um, that was possibly could be enough as a cover sheet. I've, I've um, in my report to the ACT, I've commented on that, that the ACT actually creates a cover sheet. Um, so, um, and it tells you I mean, what the word count is and when it was submitted and in which assignment and so on. Um, again, the cover sheet appears. Oh, um, the reason why it comes up with the red is because I had it turned on. Now our students don't have access to it at the moment, so they wouldn't be able to see, see that part. But you can see the, the commenting was kind of cut off a little bit. And um, yeah, it doesn't look very neat. So that's why it's best to engage with that comment on online first. But if we go down to the very bottom of the page, you'll see the, um, the neat summary of, of all the comments. But it's, it is awkward to flick back and forth. Um, yeah, and then again, this is just the report that is available to me because I had it marked as um, visible. Um, questions? Correct. So 
It's actually a really nice transition to my next slide because that's the potential, I guess, moderation process. Uh, so. No, that's uh, so. What we do at the moment is uh, just find the Great. Um, so in this case, so we do have in our in our grading sheet, we have a penalty area that applies. So and and an extra would then put the comment in, say three percent were deducted for a day late or one week. It tells you if it's a minute late. Yeah, yeah, you can you can put a cutoff. Oh uh, no, you can't put a cutoff date on this one. In the na native module, you can put a cutoff date and say I'm no longer expecting accepting assignments after two weeks. But Turnitin doesn't have that feature. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So it doesn't calculate it electronically or something. Yeah. Like something. Mm, yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, so let me just go to <laughs> the last part that I wanted to show. And uh, this is actually, yeah, turn it in. Um, the, the, the back end. Oh, that's the wrong screen. The right one. Here we go. Uh, Log into turn it in. Now, this is a potential pathway for moderators and how they were able to, would be able to see um, assignments. So uh, here, different units. So let's just pick up that, that, assignment, uh, that, that unit that we looked at before, the theology unit. Um, and then go to Gradebook. Now we're multi-streaming here, which means that uh, 400 and 600 levels are together. And you'll notice that some students haven't actually put an assignment in for the 400 level because then 600. So, and it calculates you the, the, the mark based on the weighting as well. So, the quiz was only worth 10%. Again, that is not marked by Turnitin, it's, it's a native thing by Moodle. But you can still put, put it down as, a, as an assessment item. Um, yeah, and then if you, if you sort them, for example, by by points, then you'll get them the P and the D's, or P to B, D, and you want to review this P mark, for example. Just click on the student, and say, okay, let's let's have a look at this paper, the PH401, and then it opens it straight away, and you will be able to, to see the marking for that, for that student. Now, if you go back to here and go back to the great book, um, you can then pick a, a C paper and look at it. So it is very transparent, it's very open. You can, you can just scroll through, through that unit and compare it. So it's got a lot of potential there. Yeah, that, you, you put it probably in the comments and say, look, your paper was actually an HD, but you got such a high penalty that it dropped down to a B plus. No, no. Because you would still need to see the comments, I guess. But um, yeah, similar to the uh, term mark. Certainly. Yeah. Just replace terms or repeat terms? <laughs> <laughs> Now, what it means, in order to use it effectively, uh, we have to change our practice at BST. At the moment, we don't give students a full grade. We give them a distinction or a credit. 
um, in this case, we'll actually have to change it and say, no, you actually received 67% and it's, that's what it is. The moderator can still mark it down possibly, but at the moment it sits at 67. And, and this enables you to actually have the view, otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to see any marks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Okay, so uh, has anyone heard of Feedback Studio? That's just one slide. Um, no, um, this is the new thing that Tonadin has put out. Uh, I just discovered it actually yesterday because we've used a classic screen. Um, this is the new format. So all the, the, the whole tour that I gave you might be actually, that's what it will look like later on. So, but they haven't made it compulsory for everyone to use it yet. So you're still able to use the classic view. Um, but this is the new view. So you can see that everything is actually available on the right hand side if you turn everything on. So you don't have to toggle between screens anymore. So they try to streamline it a little bit. So by the time you might end up using it at your college, this is what you'll be familiar with then. Um, so that's the new screen. Uh, 